Hello YouTubers, this is a Macintosh LC 475. This machine came from YouTube user 16mm DJ, 16mm DJ. If you watch his channel, he got this machine from his old Seattle school district. Uh, one of his old English teachers had donated it to him to play around with, right? Well, if you may or may not see his channel, his original hard disk drive, which is in this plastic wrap right here, had failed. And since he doesn't know too much about Macintoshes, he wasn't quite sure on how to get it running. And I felt bad considering I had a couple extra drives laying around. So I went ahead and preloaded a hard disk drive and sent him one, which is this one right here. Worked great. And then it also failed. So I said, okay, go ahead and send me the machine. I will replace the hard drive again and go through everything on this board and go through everything. A floppy drive, another hard disk drive, go through the power supply, all that stuff. Completely restore this machine. Um, that way you should never have problems out of it again. So the first thing he did ask me to do is to back up his data off the dead hard drive because he has stuff on here he wants to save, so I'm going to do exactly that before we put the new hard drive in it. This is the one I sent him. It's also dead, and uh, it's coming out of there. It's going, to get, it's going to get thrown away. I don't know if I'll throw it away. I might keep the electronic board for parts, but other than that, I will throw it away. So, he went to his local re-PC in Seattle, Washington. Um... 50 pin SCSI hard disk drive, 500 megabytes for $30. I think he paid for that. So, 500 megabytes of space for an early vintage Macintosh. That should be plenty of room compared to the original 80 megabyte. Um, there's the RePC certified sticker that it has been wiped. So, that means I will have to format the hard disk drive, load Apple disk drivers on there to be able to boot the operating system. Um, so, first things first, what we're going to do is I did unplug the power to the machine. That way the hard disk drive doesn't try to cry at me. Um, so in order to back up his information, I have a local talk cable. Apple Talk local talk cable plugged into the parallel or not parallel port printer port serial port and it's hooked up to this machine right here this is my main machine that I use for saving and storing all my files and all of that stuff and we're going to just create him a folder in here called 16 millimeter DJ that way I have his information that he wants saved and I'll drag it back over once I get the machine running again um, so, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and power up the machine. On this disk is System 7.5 Network Access Disk. This has the minimum system and minimum drivers required to get this machine on an Apple Talk network. It has your bare minimum Ethernet drivers, which I don't have an Ethernet card in here yet, and has your bare minimum local talk drivers. Since I've used this disk with other machines, my Apple Talk information that goes to this computer here should be stored in the memory for the preferences file on that disk. So we're going to go ahead and start the machine up. So while that is booting, um, in case you're not familiar with the Macintosh LC 475 series, brand new PRAM battery, a 68 LC 040 microprocessor. This is the low cost version of the 68040, meaning it does not have an FPU. Um, RAM slot, onboard RAM, VRAM, video memory, and the main power supply. Uh, all of the glue logic, including the swim chip and everything, is integrated into here. Um, okay, 
It's asking me for my ample talk using my password A B C one two three. Enter. I don't have his drive hooked up yet. I'm just simply booting up the machine and uh, checking it out. See what kind of RAM is in there. It is. It does not have a RAM stick, so that means it should have its bare minimum of on board of four megabytes. But we're going to go ahead and check that out anyway and make sure. And there's my two shared volumes on the file server. So if I want to, I can access that network share. And it should have all the same stuff. Yep, there it is. There's two, <laughs> there's two gigabytes free. I have a 20 gigabyte drive in the file server, but I had to split it up because of the way HFS works. There's various files that are volume size limitations because those drives that big were not even heard of back then. Anyway, I want to go ahead and check it out see what this machine has. It has, yep, as I suspected, the bare minimum 4 megs of RAM. We'll fix that though. How are we going to fix that? Right here. Here we have an old floppy disk case. Cool. 72 pin SIM and some early 5 volt, 3.3 volt SD RAM. So, scavenging between all these, I should have enough to make this thing work. Heck, if I have enough RAM, I can bump this thing up to Mac OS 8.1. Mac OS 8.1 gives you the Carbon Library, which runs a lot of newer software like Apple Works 6, and etc. And some other carbonized applications. So anyway, now that we have the initial state of this machine, we're going to go ahead and shut it down. Make sure everything goes good with the shutdown process. Pick out the disk, set the disk aside, and then sleeve. And we're going to cut off the power of the machine. And take this hard drive out and put it back in there. And we're going to do the same thing I did in my other video. We'll take the screws out. We're going to position the head. Hopefully the drive electronics will lock onto the servo tracks and recognize this hard drive. It's a 50-50 shot. It may work, it may not work. I'm going to go ahead and try it anyway, because if it does work, I'm going to use local talk. We're going to back up the information off the hard disk, off this hard disk drive. And since it is local talk cable, it runs at 200 or so kilobytes a second, so it will take a long time. It will take a long time. Well, when I get an Ethernet card, it won't take near as long, but over local talk, it will take a long time. But even, the, even such, with having this cable, you can make an adapter to go from your standard Macintosh DIN serial to your DB9. You use a USB to serial adapter. Therefore, you can get this machine to talk to a PC through a network share, Apple share volume on a PC emulator such as Basilisk 2 or Cheap Shaver or something like that. You can actually physically map the serial ports. Then you can have create a local talk volume to get files from your PC to your Macintosh without using floppies. Or, if you get a network card, you have to be running a machine that is Windows XP. You cannot use Vista or 7. You might be able to use the 32-bit versions, but I know you cannot use the 64-bit version. The network driver for Basilisk, or Basilisk 2, however you pronounce that. But if you do have an XP machine, you can install the network driver that links itself into Basilisk 2. And then you can create an Ethernet Apple Talk share across your whole network. That way you can use this machine to get on your Apple Talk Share on your emulator running on your main PC, your main computer, and get files back and forth between the two machines. But for me, what I end up doing is I got this computer as an FTP server so I can go to the PC over here and copy files from the PC over to this computer which and then I can transfer it over to older computers that don't have Ethernet capability. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, 
get this hard drive mounted in here and we'll be right back. Okay, his original hard drive is now in place. So, got the screws out already. Go ahead and take the lid off. Power up the machine. Nope, she did not work. Let's try it again. All right, there we go. That's how we roll in this business. Screw started, you idiot. All right, the screws are now in place. The clock is not set to the correct date and time. Hang on, I'm gonna get the screw in here. So, all right, this hard drive is now operational. So, screws are mounted in place, the machine is up and running, we're running system software 7.1, Macintosh LC 475, that ought to look familiar. So, alright, there's 41 megabytes in the disk and 35 free. Old stuff, Microsoft Works 3, Hypercar Level 3 Workshop. JPEG view. Let's see. It's a JPEG file. Hmm. I do see that 256 uh, monitors, if I say correctly. Hey, how about that? Alright, here's what we're going to do. We're, we're going to go ahead and see. I'm going to go to the chooser. So you can see is my Apple Talk server. Yep, there it is. Mount it. Taser Curry. Let's see. Come on. Password A B C one two three. Connect. Alright. There is the alright. Now, that volume is mounted, so we're going to go ahead and create him a folder in here. I'm going to call this folder, new folder, 16mmJ. Go ahead and open that folder. It's on the server now. Let's go ahead and close that window. Now. Hit it, select though. Copy. Right, here we go. This is going to take a very long time. So I will be back when this gets done. Okay, it's been about a half hour later. Everything on the main drive has been copied over, all except for the system folder. So before we start looking through the system folder, we're going to take everything that's on the desktop and get it ready to be selected and moved over. So what we're going to do is hold the shift key, click, click, one, two, copy those up. Hopefully they don't take another uh, 10, 20 minutes. It might. As soon as this gets done, I'll be right back. Alright, that's done copying out of the system folder. So, we're going to go at, I mean, not system folder, but the desktop. Let's see. Cookie, final. I don't know anything about the trashed items, but we'll copy it anyway. Just in case. 
That shouldn't take long. At least I hope not. Someday over the rainbow it'll get done. <laughs> okay, never mind. Had a little goofball, but what can I say? In case you're wondering what that that blowing noise is, that's my air conditioner. That unit is loud. Very loud. Alright, now, that's copy. Let's go ahead and move that out of my way. Check out the system folder. See what we've got in there. System enabler for the LC. Uh, control panels, anything in there. Auto idle. Super clock. Oh yeah, I remember that. System seven, system seven never came with the clock. Oh crap! Wrong time. I might as well get the time right before we go any further. Otherwise, when we go to format the hard disk drive, um, we're not going to be able to get the right everything on there. So controls at the date and time. It is the year. Da, 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 da. 100 years later. It's the year 2011. It is the fourth, I think. Let me check the IMAC. Yeah. Fourth. Um, it is seven. p.m. All right, that clock is correct now. All right, any, any special control panels? No. Any special extensions that we need to save? Disinfectant, and all that's typical. Laser writer, utilities, CD-ROM drive extensions. Don't need any of that. See what else is there. Apple menu items, alarm clock, print shop. What's it? Ah, store on a file server. That won't work. All right. Okay. It appears that everything that needs to be copied is copied. So we're gonna go ahead and shut the system down. We're gonna put some RAM in it. Well, first we're gonna pull the hard drive out because we know it's bad. We're done with what we need to do. So we're gonna pull the hard disk drive out. And we're going to check the RAM. Okay, or we're going to put RAM in. So, on with part two of the Restoring Macintosh LC 475 series.